Hi, in this video I want to look at Wheelock's Chapter 9, which I have titled, This, That, and One Sailor. Um, hopefully that'll grab your attention. Let's move on. So, the thing about this chapter, Chapter 9, is not that it's particularly hard. In fact, um, for many of the chapters that are to come now in Wheelock, I get the impression that that really there there is no ooh, I don't understand this kind of kind of thing going on. It's, it's not that anything in these chapters is difficult. It's that it's the weight of the minutia. It's the weight of of little pesky details that I somehow have to shove into this head. Uh, this this stretch of of Wheelock, I'll I'll, I'll acknowledge is very difficult for me, um, or at least was at one point, because I'm a big picture kind of person. I see connections. I'm intuitive. Uh, and so this kind of, and, and, and I, I have a guess that the kind of person who is interested in Latin is probably often that intuitive type person. Now, there are, of course, people who want to be doctors or who want to learn vocabulary to help them on their, their SAT. Um, there are those sorts of people. But uh, and, and you may actually find this easier than, than some others. Uh, but uh, for those intuitives like me who are interested in the, the big sweep of history and the, the themes and philosophy, the, this, this level of hick, hike, hock, wheeze, 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 you know, memorizing the little tiny details is incredibly taxing and burdensome on my memory cells. It's like, can I get an upgrade? Can I have some more gigabytes put in, into this head? And so there, there is nothing particularly horrible uh, about uh, these chapters other than the number of little things that I have to now uh, throw into my brain. Well, let's look at the word for this. Now, unfortunately for us English speakers, this uh, has to be able to go in all the numbers, singular and plural, has to be able to go in all the genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter, has to go in all the cases, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. And so what we find is because, because uh, the word for this and the word for that has to be able to modify any noun, so it can be used as what's called a demonstrative adjective, demonstrative adjective, that is, this book, this boy, this man. There it's being used as an adjective. It's telling you about boy or, or book, which, of course, is masculine in Latin, but that's not important right now. So I, I need to have a, uh, a hick, hike, a hock. I've got to have to have um, all these different forms uh, that go with, for example, this man is going to, if it's the subject of the sentence, I've got to, I have to have a nominative masculine singular form of it. Uh, if I want to say this woman, I have to have a hike. I have to have a feminine singular if it's a subject nominative. Um, uh, let's say that I want to talk about something neuter ad hoc. Uh, you know, uh, ad hoc means when you do something on the spot to this situation, I guess, or something, to this um, neuter. Um, so then I'm going to have to neuter, have a neuter singular one. And of course, there are some patterns here. Uh, let's just dive in, shall we? So hick, hike, hock, wheeze, 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 wheek, 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 hunk, hunk, hock, 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 hock. Boy, that's, that's really easy, isn't it? I'm sorry, I didn't make up this language. Um, so, hick is nominative, singular, masculine. Now, at least in the genitive, uh, we have this wheus, wheus, wheus. So, for us English speakers, it's nice that the genitive and the dative all have the same form, wheek, wheek, wheek. Uh, so, um, here's one thing I, I, I do. This will come in handy for many situations that are to come. Yes, 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 it's genitive singular. Yes, 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 it's genitive singular. Yes, 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 it's genitive singular. So, wheus, yes, yes, wheus, wheus, wheus. We're going to find yes, 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 it's genitive singular a lot of times in this chapter. I'm, I'm reaching, but I'm, I'm going to go with it. Um, quick, quick, quick. You know, this C, if I take the C off of these um, uh, dative, accusative, and, and uh, ablative forms, I actually do see something vaguely familiar. So if you remember from uh, uh, the previous chapter where we did the third declension, uh, the third declension of dative singular was an, a long I. Uh, and so, you know, basically it's added a C onto it, uh, but that, um, 
that I there is, is still there. This N is a little un, unpleasant, but if you think of the accusative singular masculine being U-M or the accusative feminine singular being A-M, that might help you a little. M's and N are, are similar types of, of consonants. Mm, 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 mm. So the, the, it was easier to say hunk rather than humpk. I mean, it just takes more effort. And so the M uh, downgraded to an N phonetically. Uh, again, I don't know if that helps you. Um, but uh, uh, honk, if you see a pretty girl, again, I'm sorry. That's really not good, is it? Um, or that guy is a hunk. I see a hunk of a man. I don't know if that helps you. Again, I'm just grabbing at anything. I used to have these struggles of conscience when these kind of memory things were a little off-centered. Uh, some of them I've repressed. But anyway, um, again, if you take the C off, ho, ha, ho, that's the same as the first and second declension ending. So I don't know if that helps you. The nominative I just memorized, hick, hike, hock. Um, the plural actually isn't that bad. If you look at the plural, the nominative masculine plural, he, there's a long I. I've, I'm used to that. He's, he's, he's for the date of an ablative. Again, that's the first and second declension date of an ablative ending. Hos, has, uh, that's normal. Uh, the neuters are always going to be a little problematic, uh, but we, we get the added benefit that the nominative and accusative of a neuter are always going to be the same. So even though I have to invest a little brain cells, a few brain cells into hock as a neuter uh, singular, uh, once I've got the nominative down, I also have the accusative down. Same thing with hike uh, for the neuter plural nominative. Once I've got hike down, then I've got the accusative uh, plural down as well. Unfortunately, and you may have noticed this, the feminine nominative singular and the neuter Nominative plural and accusative plural look exactly the same. Only context can tell you, I'm sorry, like I said, I didn't invent this language. Well, there you have it. Again, I don't think that there's any new concepts here. Uh, we know what a nominative is. We know what an, an, a genitive is. We know what masculine and feminine is. The thing that's, that's uh, annoying about this is that we've had to memorize some new irregular forms. Well, there you have it. That might be the worst part of this chapter. Uh, so if you've got that, you know, maybe you're going to survive. Let's look at, the, so if that's the word for this, this book, the near demonstrative, by the way, it can be used all by itself as a pronoun. I see this. Uh, that's, that's it being used as a demonstrative pronoun. If I see, I see this man, then it's being used as a demonstrative adjective because it's telling you about a noun. But if I say, I, I see this, and I just leave it like that, then it's standing in place of a noun, and it's called a demonstrative pronoun. Again, you can probably translate Latin just fine without knowing that. Okay, so let's go to the word for that. This is the near demonstrative. This cup, you know, that cup is the far demonstrative. Now this one, um, if you if you have the hick hike hock chart, then this one, a lot of it, uh, for example, let's talk about everything other than the nominative singular. So in the genitive singular, we have yes, 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 ilius, ilius, ilius. Uh, and in the dative, we have ili, 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 which, like I said, is the normal third declension dative singular anyway, a long I in the dative singular of, of the third declension. So once I've got the yes, 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 it's genitive singular, and if I can remember that the third declension dative singular has a long I, I'm okay. Um, um, I got that. Oh, ah, uh, oh, I got that. That's all stuff I memorized back in the first and second declension. Look in the plural. E, I, a, uh, man, that's first and second declension stuff. Orum, arum, orum. I remember this. Is, is, is. Os, as, a. Uh. Is, is, is. I remember all that stuff. The plural, it looks exactly. Yay. We're thankful for small favors. The plural of this word for that, that book, that man, that woman, um, is exactly the same as the endings of the first and second declension. Exactly the same as the adjective magnus. Yay! Uh, the, the singular isn't that bad. The um, the accusative and the ablative look very familiar. The dative, third declension, I might be a little rustier on, but okay, the long I. Um, and then yes, 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 it's genitive singular. Okay, so if I can memorize these three nominative forms, uh, ele, ela, alud, uh, then I'm going to be pretty much set for this chart because, again, the the neuter nominative singular and the neuter accusative singular are going to both look the same. 
Um, and so if I, and Ilah actually is an ending I know from the first declension. So Ila, um, which is the dictionary form I learn, if I've got that down, hey, I'm good. So here's the word for that. Again, no, no deep secrets of the universe here. No complicated, complicated, no. It's, it's just more brain cells that I have to put to use. Okay, so we have this, we have that. And now for, for English speakers, this is going to be a little bit strange, that there would be a uh, this, that, and that, uh, that guy. You remember that guy um, where we put a little emphasis in it? Um, you might know from Spanish, this might help you, the word for uh, this in Spanish is este. Um, that might help you kind of get, get in the ballpark here, uh, although este doesn't mean that of that that near you that thing near you uh, Spanish has a word uh, that that um, uh, means uh, I think it's a, 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 a quella, uh, that thing near you that's a third kind of demonstrative we don't have this in English um, so but you you can like if you it, there has a kind of a, a neg it can have a negative tone to it so if I say ista Regina that queen you know I'm talking about the notorious uh, or in the uh, Three Amigos movie, infamous queen. Uh, but anyway, uh, let, let me talk about the form. If you know ile, ala, alud, then you have this, because the endings of ista, ista, istad are exactly the same as uh, ile, ila, alud. So again, the nominative and accusative istad are going to be the same. Uh, the plural is exactly the same as the first and second declension. The dative, again, a little annoying maybe, but it goes with the third declension, long I, for the dative singular. Again, if you had a perfect memory, you'd remember that from earlier chapters. Um, the, the accusative and ablative are very much the same as the first and second declension, except for this. Uh, de, uh, accusative, neuter, singular, because it's the same as the, the nominative. Uh, so, ila, la, lud, istas, da, stud. Yes, 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 it's genitive. Uh, istias, istias, istias. Yes, yes, yes. It's genitive. Again, so uh, I'm trying to uh, keep you into patterns from the previous uh, chapters. Um, if, you, if you understand, uh, if you know that this is a lot like ila ala lud, you'll, you know, you'll be just fine. Um, now, again, a new kind of demonstrative. So we have this, we have that, and we have that, that guy, that woman, that book, you know, that one, uh, kind of more emphatic. Um, and um, uh, and you might think of that that uh, if you know Spanish that aquella where it's it's that of yours that thing of yours or that um, the one near you perhaps okay um, one more slide and we will be done with this chapter the next slide um, is about one sailor Unus Nauta Unus Nauta uh, is uh, by the way Nauta is one of those pain words the N in pain it's, it has a look of a feminine first declension noun, but it's really masculine, uh, which is why unus is um, uh, masculine going with nauta, because the adjective has to match the noun it goes with in case, number, and gender. It doesn't have to look like the noun it goes with, but it has to match in its inner heart of hearts in case, number, and gender. By the way, the first U on this should be long, but I didn't bother. I was tired uh, when I made the PowerPoint. Okay, so basically... These are a set of adjectives. Each, this is an acronym. Each letter in unus nauta stands for a word. And each one of these words is uh, known for having the yes, yes, yes. Remember, yes, yes, yes. Um, all, all, of the na all of the adjectives I'm about to show you um, have, for example, unius, unius, unius uh, in their genitive. Um, or, and in the dative singular, they have uni, 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 with a long I. All the rest of it, I think, is going to be pretty normal. So, unus for the masculine, una for the feminine, unum uh, for the neuter. Uh, and here, let me just mention a couple of uh, Latin expressions that uh, you may or may not know. So, you probably know a pluribus unum, uh, which is uh, kind of an American saying. A is the form of the preposition X when it comes before a consonant. So it's easier to say A pluribus than to say X pluribus. It takes more effort. And so 
the X goes away uh, in front of consonants, or at least it can. Uh, so X means out of, uh, Exodus, the way out of Egypt. Uh, a pluribus, out of many, uh, and that ibis, this might help you remember the ibis ending uh, for uh, the third declension. It's a it's a ablative plural or dative plural uh, ending. Um, so out of many, by the way, the word plural comes from this word. Um, so out of many, one. We are one people out of many people. We are So that's the kind of the American motto. Um, uh, homo unius libri uh, may not be an expression you know, uh, but I do mention if you happen to be Methodist or someone from the Wesleyan tradition, uh, this is something that the founder of the Methodist tradition, John Wesley, said. He said that he wanted to be a man of one book. Homo means man or person. Uh, unius means of one. It's genitive. Yes, 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 it's genitive. And then libri uh, is a genitive singular also, a masculine. So I don't know if that helps you remember the yes, 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 probably not. Um, so all of the words that are on this uh, PowerPoint slide are words that do yes, yes, yes in the genitive singular and e, e, e in the dative singular, that, that third declension uh, dative singular. Unus does it. Uh, nullus does it. Ullus does it. Nullus is none. Uh, ullus is any. Uh, if you can kind of memorize those together. Um, so um, nullus in the genitive will be nullius, nullius, nullius. Uh, and ullus in the genitive will be ullius, ullius, ullius. So none and any. Again, no big, wow, I didn't uh, see that one coming. It's, it's just more brain cells. There's no great profound truth here. Um, the S, so see unus, U-N-I-S, uh, U-N-U-S. <laughs> um, so uh, the S stands for sola, which means only or alone. Uh, solo, he's going solo, that works, doesn't it? Uh, some of the great uh, mottos of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s are sola uh, expressions. Sola scriptura um, is uh, by scripture alone or in scripture alone. It's an ablative there. I put a long A on it, so you know that. Sola fide, uh, fide, in, we would say, means by faith alone. And sola gratia means by grace alone. Uh, these are some of the kind of banner cries of the of the Reformation, and they're all ablatives. Okay, um, neuter. Now we're getting to the nauta part. Neuter uh, means neither of two, so neither masculine nor feminine. Neuter. Um, neuter. Neither of two. Um, alias means other or another. By the way, uh, alias uh, didn't have its own genitive. So whenever you want to say the genitive of alias, you shift to actually the final A in unus nauta, which is alter. Um, so anyway, the genitive of alias is alterius. Yes, yes, yes. Um, who knew? I don't know why. It just did it. Uh, well, actually, I do. You, you can see why. Because the nominative is alias. It already looks like a genitive in this yes, yes, yes kind of world. Uh, so they needed to come up with something different to distinguish it. Uh, so, alias is another or other. Uh, uter means either of two. So, neuter means neither of two. Uter means either of two. I like, I like the flexibility of that, uh, to be able to limit it to either of two. Uh, totus means all. Um, total, that's pretty easy to remember. And then lastly, alter, uh, which means the, the other of two. So, alias means another but there could be like 50 other ones. Alter means the other of two. So Cicero, the Roman orator uh, who lived in the first century BC and died the same year as Caesar, uh, Julius Caesar, and uh, was in favor of the assassination of Julius Caesar, if I remember correctly. Um, and then when, when those who killed Julius Caesar um, got their, their revenge, or, um, those who revenged the death of Julius Caesar, uh, I think Augustus put Cicero to death. If I remember correctly, I might be wrong. But basically, Cicero um, ended up dying for um, basically being a supporter of the Republic, for you Star uh, Wars fans. But he said that a friend, in his uh, famous treatise on friendship, De Amicitia, um, said that a friend is an alter ego, 
A friend is another I, another self, uh, which is a fun little concept. So, U-N-U-S-N-A-U-T-A, Unus Nauta, one sailor. These are the words that in Latin, or some of the words, that also do yes, 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 E, 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 in the genitive and dative singular of their forms. So, whew, we made it through. This has been a chapter nine of Wheelock.